गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो इन माई लास्ट क्लास आई स्टार्टेड ऑफ विथ केमिकल रिएक्शन एंड इक्वेशन आई टॉट यू अबाउट द केमिकल रिएक्शन एंड द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ केमिकल रिएक्शन लाइक केमिकल रिएक्शन बेस्ड ऑन वट इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेड स्टेट देन चेंज इन टेम्परेचर एंड देन वी केम डाउन टू द केमिकल इक्वेशंस so today i am before going into further i want to give you some exercise based on chemical equation like balancing of the chemical equation how to balance already i have told you i am giving you some equations balance the chemical equations chemical equations like first one what i am giving a simple one like magnesium plus oxygen mg one more i am giving iron plus water this iron is red hot iron when it is passed over steam it is formed fe3o4 plus h2 you have to balance it how to balance it i have showed you in my previous class by the trial and error method uh one more balancing which you am giving you to do for zinc plus h2so4 zno4 plus h2 one more i am giving you lead nitrate with potassium iodide forming forming lead iodide and forming lead iodide and potassium nitrate another one is calcium oxide plus water giving calcium hydroxide so these are the certain chemical reactions i have given to you you balance it and do it you try to do it already i have when i was teaching you the balancing i have given you how to balance the chemical equations by the trial and error method you can do this now one thing is that always in the exam you may not get the product this is the reactant side already i have told which are the reactant which are the product side but sometimes in the exams it will may be asked what will happen this is balancing the chemical equation this is the product side is product reactant as well as the products is given sometimes the products may not be given the equation can be given in words so just try to do this exercise do this questions balancing if you have any problem you try to ask me in my next class okay or you can ring me up i am giving my phone number or contact number that is 79809172582 this is my contact number if you have any doubts in balancing if you find difficulty in balancing you can ask me is it clear now i'll give you different now some different types of balancing going to the different categories or different types of questions which i want to give you on balancing i'm just right translate the following equations and then balance it and then balance it this is the different types okay like i'm giving you one question when hydrogen gas combines with nitrogen it gives ammonia hydrogen gas combines with combines with nitrogen to form ammonia so this is in word you have to translate into chemical equation i'll just show you 
H2 plus N2 it will form ammonia. For this you have to know the name of the product. Ammonia formula is NH3. Already we have done it the name of the naming of the compound in my in the last class. Now you see this equation is not balanced. How to balance it? Here you see two nitrogen is there, here two hydrogen is there. Here one hydrogen, three nitrogen. So if you write here two then it becomes two nitrogen. Two is the suffix. Two nitrogen here two nitrogen. Correct? Now hydrogen two three is a six hydrogen. So if you write here 3, it becomes 3 to the 6 hydrogen. So left side, left hand side 6, 2, here also this one is 2, uh, two and nitrogen is 6. So it is a balanced chemical equation. Now one more type of equation is like barium chlorides reacts with aluminium sulfate to give aluminium chloride and barium sulfate. Now I am just writing in the word barium chloride chloride reacts with aluminium sulfate aluminium sulfate to form aluminium chloride and Form barium sulfate. Now, what is the formula of barium chloride? BaCl2 plus aluminium sulfate. Al2 SO4 chlorides. Now, forming aluminium chloride. AlCl3 plus barium sulfate BaSO. Now you see, before reaction, barium here one atom, here also one atom. Chlorine two atom, chlorine three atom. Aluminium two atom, aluminium one atom. Sulfate three, sulfate radical three, here three. So, if you do it by trial and error method, it will be, or if you can, if you are able to balance it, see here two aluminium. If I write here two, then it forms two aluminium here. 2 aluminium, 2, 3 is a 6 chlorine. So if I write here 3, 3 suffix here, so 3 to the 6 chlorine. So chlorine is now, chlorine is 6, aluminium is 2, LHS and RHS, same, 6, 6, 6 and 2. Now, sulphate is 3 here, 3 sulphate. Now 3 barium, if I write here 3, so barium, left hand side, 3, right hand side also 3. Now sulphate, sulphate radical, left hand side 3 and right hand side also 3. So this is the balanced chemical equation. So what we learned, we learned two different types. One is equation will be already given, you have to just balance it or equation will be given in the word equation form, you have to translate it and then you have to balance it and show. One more type of balancing I will show you. Yeah, what happens when? What happens when? Product will not be given. Only the reactant will be given. You have to convert that into equation and then balance it. Means you have to write the product and after that you have to balance it. Now next is complete the equation and then balance them. Complete the equations and then balance it. This is the third type you may get in the exam. First one I will show you like NaOH plus HCl. What will be the product? Second, iron plus copper sulfate. Third, zinc plus silver nitrate. You have to first, these are the reactant given. 
these are all the reactant okay these are the reactant you have to write the product and then you have to accordingly balance it so what i am going to do it nh this is nh is a base and hcl is an acid so when it reacts so na cl plus h2 you see here na1 na1 oxygen 1 oxygen 1 hydrogen 2 to chlorine one balance. so it is a balanced chemical equation second one iron when reacts with copper sulfate so it will form feso4 plus cu iron will displace copper from copper sulfate solution and it will form ferrous sulfate plus copper this reaction is also named as single displacement reaction we will come to it later half single displacement reaction we call it as single displacement reaction and this is also called as acid base reaction acid base or neutralization reaction you term it as neutralization reaction third is when zinc reacts with silver nitrate it forms zinc nitrate plus silver now you see here it is not balanced so you write here 2 then it will form 2ag here so this is the balanced chemical equation one more i can give you what happens when potassium metal reacts with water this is because if we before balancing it seems to be balanced but no because valency of zinc is valency of zinc is 2 valency of nitrate is 1 so by criss cross rule it forms zn no 3 So it forms zinc nitrate. Next one is potassium plus water. When it reacts, it forms potassium hydroxide KOH plus H two. Now you see here, this equation is also not balanced. Why? Potassium one, potassium one, oxygen one, oxygen one, hydrogen two. Here one plus two, three. So if you write here two and write here so left hand side potassium two right hand side potassium will be if I write here two it will also be two now oxygen you see oxygen is two here right hand oxygen if I take oxygen left hand side two right hand side also two. Now hydrogen, you see two here two 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 plus two four, so it will be hydrogen left hand side two into two four here two plus two is four, so it is a balanced chemical equation. So this type of balancing you are going to get. So we have learned about the different types of balancing of equations. Now some more questions I am giving to you, like you just uh, try to solve these questions. Like why should you try to find the answer? Why should a magnesium ribbon? Why should a magnesium ribbon be cleaned before burning in air? Why should a magnesium ribbon be cleaned before burning in air? Second question: What are exothermic? What are exothermic and endothermic reactions? Explain. with examples already i have given you in my last lecture third question what are the characteristics what are the characteristics of a chemical reaction and one more question which i am giving to i have given lots of balancing that you do and why is respiration
why is respiration considered as an exothermic reaction? Exothermic reactions. Now, you may ask why is respiration consideration, uh, considered as an exothermic reaction? Now, why is it so called? Why is respiration you called it as an exothermic reaction? Now, we know during respiration when we respire, energy is needed. We need energy. Now, we get this energy from the food we eat. We eat different types of food. We, the food which we eat, we get the energy from this. During digestion, food is broken down into simpler substances. Okay. For example, carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are further broken down to form glucose. This glucose, they combines with oxygen to give out uh, carbon dioxide with the release of energy. Once again, I am reading. Respiration, during respiration, we need energy. Now, where do you get energy? We get energy by eating food. When we eat food, we eat, we eat different types of food. Okay, so we get this it from the food we eat. The digested food is broken down into simpler substances. Okay, for example, carbohydrate, glucose, fats and all. This carbohydrates, the further broken breaks down into glucose, C6, H12, O6, glucose, plus 6, O2, it gives 6, CO2, plus 6, H2O, plus energy. It is energy is released, released. So we know exothermic reactions, heat is en energy is released, heat is released. So respiration is considered as an exothermic reaction. Hope I am able to explain you about all that. If you see the NCRT book, you will see lots of balancing equation. If you have any doubts in doing balancing, translating, you can, you should do, you can send me in my WhatsApp. I have given my WhatsApp number. If you have any doubts, you can clear your doubts and ask me further. In my next class, which I'll be coming up in two or one or two days with the various types of chemical reactions.